It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Fresno State head swimming and diving coach, Coach Jean Fleck. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get involved in coaching college swimming and diving? Yeah, well, I'm being a swimmer, and I'd been a swimmer and a coach since I was 13. I started coaching summer league and swimming lessons and doing that. And when I was at Iowa State, um, of the local club team in Des Moines asked me to help out with their team. And I started coaching in the summers and then um, even my fifth year with them. And that's when I really decided I wanted to go into coaching. What was your college experience like going to Iowa State? It was absolutely wonderful. It was the best um, five years of my life. I swam for, coached for one. Um, I loved Iowa State, um, have the best friends in the world um, from there. And we had a lot of coaches that came out of um, our college experience. Um, Nick and Eric Hansen both coached at the Division I level at Wisconsin, Arizona. Um, and um, so we, I had a great group of uh, swimmers with me. It was wonderful. What was it like getting to coach at your alma mater of Iowa State? It was a great experience. Bob Grosseth was the men's head coach and he had me volunteer with him for my, it was kind of an internship I needed for school um, in uh, uh, recreation and sports was my major. And uh, so um, I got to do that and it was wonderful. I got a great experience. How was it like going from Iowa State to leaving your alma mater to go to University of Wisconsin? Wyoming? Well, it was very different. You know, University of Wyoming was my first job out of college, you know, as a full-time job. The head coach was new. Um, I was new. I'd never done it. Got thrown in. I was the uh, head assistant for both men and women. Um, and I'd never done it before. And I, my head coach had never been a college coach. So, it was a lot of learning on your feet and really depending on a lot of mentors um, that I had at the time, Bob Grosseth, Kathy Wickstrand, and really depending on them to help me. Of course, what was it like being the distance coach and the recruitment coordinator for Wyoming? Well, it was awesome. I had a great group of young swimmers that really wanted to learn and get better. And um, so it was awesome. I, I mean, they did really well. I had my first NCAA qualifier was a young man, Rob Clayton, who ended up coaching at Air Force and is still at Air Force to this day. Um, he was absolutely wonderful and, and did great things. And then um, recruiting was really interesting because when you're at a place like Wyoming, you have to find a a certain person that wants to go to a place like Wyoming. And once you figure that out, recruiting was pretty easy if you got the right people. What were some of your roles as the recruitment coordinator for Wyoming? Just identifying swimmers and figuring out who we wanted to talk to. And we had men and women, so I had to do both. And just trying to narrow those kids down to, are they interested in the outdoors? Are they interested in you know, swimming at altitude, there's a couple things that you really needed to zero in on. And, and once you did that, then you could bring them in. What was it like getting your first head coaching job at Northern Illinois? Well, Northern Illinois was a great, I was hired as the women's coach um, when I was 25. The men's coach quit two weeks before school started. So I asked the athletic director if I could take over both because I didn't think that they'd be able to get a coach in. So I didn't even have an assistant coach. I coached men and women. Um, I had a fifth year that helped me out that year and a part-time diving coach. 
Um, I ended up getting to coach men and women for all eight years that I was there. Um, I had a young swimmer, Jared Schrader, who ended up being a coach at Northwestern, um, who had not swam since he was 12. And he walked on the team at Northern Illinois, ended up, you know, breaking every school record, but the breaststrokes and our conference swimmer of the year for three years and uh, swam with me for seven years there training and trying to make the Olympic team. Um, and it was, uh, it was one of the greatest, ex it was a great experience. Um, I still talk to probably 90% of the kids on that team. I mean, they were only four years younger than me, you know, as, and I was the head coach. So it was a great experience. I became a national team coach during that time. It was awesome. Of course. What was it like having those coaching those people that were close in age with you, but still obviously having that respect that you were the head coach? You know, it was a totally different time period in the, you know, in the nineties, you could be a lot tougher and not, um, and I had to be, I was very, very strict and I was very blunt and I was to the point and I had to earn their respect and it took a while, but boy, once I got it, it was, they would do anything for me. What was it like leaving Northern Illinois to go to Ohio State? Well, that was always a dream, you know, when I grew up, uh, my family, I swam in the big, in the big eight, but my family grew up in Michigan and, uh, you know, the big 10 was always something that I strived for. It was a goal that I had that I always wanted to coach in the big 10. So when that job opened up, um, it was really exciting. It was fun. It was scary. To be honest with you, I probably did my worst coaching those eight years, nine years at Ohio State because I never felt comfortable. I never felt like I belonged there. Um, and I feel like I was always trying to prove myself instead of coaching and be believing in myself. And I think I made a lot of mistakes at Ohio State that I wish I could go back and do more. You know, I think I'm a better coach now and I was a better coach at Northern Illinois than I ever was at Ohio State. What were some of your accomplishments at Ohio State? Well, at Ohio State, we had, um, we were, we, we probably never, we didn't win a Big Ten title. We were never even in the top three. We were in the top five. Um, we had two, I had a girl make two Olympic teams um, for Turkey. She, I got to go to the Olympics with her. I had another young lady, I had three girls make world championships while I was there. Um, and our GPA, I don't think ever went below 3.4 or anything like that. I mean, we were really great in school. I would say 90% of my young ladies at Ohio State did lifetime best times while they swam for me. Um, but I just never got to the Big Ten championship. And that was a bummer. Of course, as a coach, what was it like going with your, with your athlete to the Olympics? It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Gulsha, she is from Turkey. And um, I got to go to the Athens Olympics. And it was one of the greatest experiences ever. How was it like, obviously, having two qualifiers in the 2007 NCAA championship? It was fun. I mean, it was really fun. They were both 200 flyers, which is really kind of funny. Um, we had, I was I did very well in the 200 free and the 200 fly when I was at Ohio State. We won the Big Tens in the in the 200 fly, I think twice or three times. And then we had NCAA qualifier and Gulsha, my young lady that um, went to the Olympics also ended up seventh at NCAAs in the 200 fly at the Georgia, I can't remember what year it was, but it was absolutely wonderful. What was it like in 2008 coming to Fresno State? Well, it was a big change. It was crazy because they had dropped the program here at uh, Fresno State. So I was coming in to start a program from scratch. And for me, after being a head coach for 16 years or whatever that was, uh, nine years, 17 years, um, 
at Northern Illinois and Ohio State to start my own program from scratch and to build a second pool because I helped build the pool at Ohio State. I was there from the day they signed the architect till the day we got in. Um, I was really excited about this opportunity. And my first year here was my favorite year of all my years of coaching because these young ladies, I got the job in May. I had to have a team in August, okay? So I had two months to fill 20 people on that team. And I did it. I took kids out of class. I took kids that never thought they'd ever swim in college. And I made a team that was so appreciative, so thankful for everything that they had. It was coaching them was a joy and they're probably some of the best alumni I have ever had. What was that like, obviously building the program from scratch at Fresno? It was so much fun. It was so much fun to shape your culture. Now your culture changes, you know, with every class that you bring in. Um, and so, you know, we were just trying to, to build a team that was competitive when we were in the WAC. And then we wanted to take the next step forward. So you, you really had to change. You really had to figure out when are you going to make that change and how you're going to make that change. What was it like in 2009 and 2010 season going to the clutch performance of the WAC championship? It was great. Um, I mean, the kids had so much fun and they were just, like I said, so thankful and they swam so well. We broke so many school records, you know, we, it, it was, it was absolutely awesome. Yeah. Of course, how did it feel in 2011 to have the first year after, obviously you said with the construction, have the first year to compete at home? It was great. I mean, when we got to jump in that pool, because we'd been driving in vans, you know, every day to a high school, you know, 20 minutes away. So it was a lot of work. So by the time that we could just come and we took a picture and I still have it of them all jumping in, holding hands off the bulkhead for the first time in the pool, it was amazing. What was that 2013 break break season, obviously breaking so many records in swimming program history? Um, it was it was awesome. And that was my first recruiting class that was there right after their it was their senior year. And Danny Yoho and Hannah Prigge both made NCAAs that year. And it was amazing. And they, you know, we were we were taking that next step forward and it was really exciting. How has it been like, obviously as head coach, seeing the Fresno State program break almost 20 records in school history? It's been a blast. Um, I, you know, I, I, I can't even, I, the, the team does the work, you know, and they're the ones that put in the day-to-day -day grind. They're the ones that, have to want to succeed and 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 they're doing it and they're I like just to be on the sidelines to just kind of guide them and keep them going down the road that they need to go down. Can you talk about of course the culture that you've built and the legacy that you've left for Fresno State? Well I haven't left it yet <laughs> so I'm still there so and I want to be there for a while. Um, well I think I talked touched this a little bit earlier is that I really believe that team culture changes every year, that every new group that you have, you have to reestablish where you want to go and what you want to do. And so I really do a lot of leadership training um, with my team. We do Wednesday meetings. We meet with a sports psychologist. We also do team building activities, you know, um, this year, our meet got canceled going to San Diego State. And so I took the whole team to Yosemite. And on the way to Yosemite, we decided, okay, instead of having New Year's resolutions, let's have a word that you want to be defined as your year of two, you know, 2022. 
And every girl on the bus, I told them beforehand. And so then on the bus to Yosemite, we talked about everybody's word and they explained why they had the certain word and what it meant to them. And then it became a, a team bonding, you know, and it was really cool. It was, and I think we only had three words that were copied and that was all confidence, which isn't surprising, you know, with a group of young ladies that confident in something that they're always working on. Um, so, but it was, it's, I think culture is key. I think if you have a negative culture, you're never going to succeed. And if you have a good, positive culture, you can do great things that you never thought you could do. Who are some of the teams that you compete in in your conference? Well, we swim Nevada every year, San Jose. We swim San Diego. Well, we were supposed to swim San Diego State, but we didn't get to down there. We were going to swim Colorado State, New Mexico. And then out of conference, we swim Cal and, and UCLA and Pepperdine. And we are swimming UC Davis this weekend. Was it like obviously swimming teams like UCLA and teams in your conference like San Diego? It's great. It, you know, I mean, that's how, who we, we need to beat. We need to beat San Diego State. If we want to win a conference championship, we got to go through San Diego State. So us swimming Cal in UCLA helps us get ready for that and to be better. What does the recruitment process look like for prospective swimmers that are looking to compete in college? So, well, now, you know, we can do the junior stuff, so, which I hate, but we will not go there. We're hoping that maybe that gets rolled back. Um, you know, swimming is very time oriented and diving is very not. So for our diving coach, videos are huge. Even in swimming now, we really do like videos, um, videos of the swimmers, but we start looking at your times when you're a sophomore we start talking to people when they're juniors. We really still wait till the spring of their junior year to start bringing them in, you know, for recruiting trips. And now that doesn't look that good with the new Omicron out there, you know, how well are we going to be able to bring them in? Last year over Zoom, we signed the best recruiting class we did. I still signed a lot of kids and recruited a lot of kids in the fall of this fall. Um, so, and last year we signed nine girls um, and we did it all over Zoom. So, you know, it really is looking for the best fit, people that want to be successful, people that want to get better. For me, coachable athletes are the most important thing that you look for, you know, and then also what you're looking for in events? Do I need divers? Do I need backstrokers? Do I need flyers? Do I need breaststrokers? So, you know, it's very similar to track and field. Do you need sprinters? Do you need cross country? What do you need at that point in time? And that's what we're looking for. Of course, what does the official visit look like when these prospective student athletes are able to come on campus to Fresno State? So we would usually just depends on where they're coming from, but we would fly them in on a Thursday night, maybe put them up in a hotel. Then Friday morning, they'd come on campus. We give them a tour. We have a meet with an academic person in their major. We go to lunch with the girls. Then we meet with our academic counselor, show them the weight room. They watch practice. Um, we have a separate pool, so if they need to swim, they can go over into a separate pool and swim while we're finishing up practice. We go to dinner, they'll hang out with the team. The next morning, they'll come and watch um, morning workout. I usually will meet with the recruits during the morning workout at some point, you know, have an a individual meeting with each recruit, because um, we'll bring in about six recruits at a weekend, okay? And then on Saturday, depending if we have a football game, if we don't have a football game, we'll go to a lake. You know, I mean, we've got all kinds of things. So, and then Sunday morning, they'll fly home. They're going to spend a lot of time with the team. The team is the most important. A coach comes and goes. They're not going to spend all their waking hours with me. They are going to be best friends with these young ladies and they've got to fit in. They've got to feel like it's comfortable and that this is the type of atmosphere that they want to do well in. 
course, when these recruits come in and you said that they are able to swim in the separate pool, what is it like, obviously, as a head coach, seeing those swimmers and seeing, obviously, what they can perform versus... But we're not allowed to watch. We're not allowed to watch. So they're over on another side that we're not watching them. What I see when I, for recruiting, it's when I go watch them swim at practice or they send me videos. That's what I'm looking for. So... I'm looking for good stroke technique, good habits, and I'm not going to see that, you know, if they come, they're going to talk to their other recruits during, you know, whatever time they get in, they don't usually really practice. So, and, and I'm not supposed to be over there. I'm not allowed to be watching them. So that's on their own. Um, So when I go visit a club team, um, and watch a practice. That's what I want to see. I want to see their habits. I want to see, are they lazy into the turns? Do they work their underwaters? Do they have good technique? Can they get a good catch? Are they breathing at the right time? Because those are things that are hard to teach, okay? If they need to get stronger or they need to work on their, you know, streamlines or things like that, I can teach that. I can teach a start. Um, but the basics of having a feel for the water, being able to catch and have good basic, you know, um, swim technique is really, really important. What advice would you give those college athletes that are swimmers that are looking to go on to the next level on the Olympic level? College athletes that want to be Olympians after college. Okay, so you need to find a place that you can train long course, that train in the summer that, you know, have the mentality that there are other things other than just NCAA swimming. Um, It's really important that you talk to the coach that you're going to swim for. Do you give opportunities for kids to go home for their nationals? Do you train kids for nationals in the summer? Do you do that? Because if they're not doing that, then you don't really want to go there. Our kids, you know, we have kids that stay every summer and train, you know, Um, but some of my Europeans, some of my foreign kids, they'll go home because they need to go home and compete at home to make their national teams. What advice would you give future college coaches looking to get started in coaching and college swimming? Well, it's a lot different than when I started, you know, in the, in in the eighties, early eighties, um, we didn't have a lot of volunteer coaches, but now it seems that being a volunteer is really your first step in because we don't have a lot of graduate assistant positions. Okay. We used to have a lot of graduate assistant positions and they have disappeared. So you've got to be willing to work two jobs or work three jobs and be a club coach and volunteer at the university, because that's how you're going to meet coaches. And that's how you're going to get future jobs. Um, Also get on, don't be scared to go division two, division three. There's a lot of coaches that move them, move up. And if you can be a head coach at a division one, or division three program and you want to go be an assistant coach at a division one they're going to look at you because you've been a head coach you know how to run a program you know how to do travel and that's what a head coach wants at a division one school they don't want to have to hold your hands you know so it's really really important i i think we're losing women coaches and we need to keep them going um We have a mentoring program in the College Swim Coaches Association that is really important and really would help a young coach that wants to be in coaching. Mentoring is key. You need to have mentors out there. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you on social media along with the Fresno State Swimming Program app? Well, we're on Instagram. you know, Fresno State Swim and Dive on Instagram. I'm Fleck Jean on Instagram. Um, I'm also on Twitter, same handle um, and same same way with our Swim and Dive. Um, our girls run our uh, Instagram account and I think they do a really, really good job. So that gives you the culture of our team. That's, that's great. Thank you again 
Coach Gene Fleck for your interview and best of luck in your future with the Fr Fresno State Swimming and Diving Program. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Gene Fleck, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.